Well, joining me now to discuss uh, solutions to the farmer herdsman crisis is Mohamedou Damaka Abubakar, who is the president's dairy commercial ranches association of nigeria Kodoran, an umbrella body of all commercial dairy farmers in nigeria you're welcome to sunrise Dili. thank you well you have an interesting perspective we did hear the uh the nsa the national security advisor to the president saying that they've begun an unarming of armed herdsmen in um, nigeria but you must be concerned because you're a stakeholder um, you need the milk from some of those cows what are some of the solutions that you see? Thank you very much. Um, first and foremost, uh, we as a country has to start looking agri as a business, not a culture anymore. It was said time and time again that uh, this problem could only be solved by the involvement of private sector. Um, so, to me, I think the solution, apart from without prejudice to what the security agencies um, plan to do, we in the private sector believe that we have a key role to play by engaging the, the herdsmen um, and getting them on board the formal agribusiness sector. How do you propose that? Um, f and well, uh, there should be intervention by government uh, because government is the enabler and we need the environment enable, to enable investors come into the sector. As it is now, the government has not provided such an environment. Uh, the, the federal, let me give you, give you a typical example. The Federal Ministry of Agri has been in the forefront of calling for the development of the dairy sector and the, 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 the beef sector as well. Uh, unfortunately, other arms of government are doing the reverse. For instance, uh, recently we've had the fiscal policy where the import duty on dairy products had been reduced to 5%. By this, it means government has opened the country for dumping of dairy products from all over the world. And this discourages local production. And by extension, it does not allow us to now bring in the Fulanis into this sector. And since the only way we can do it is now organizing them into cooperatives and collecting milk. Some of our members have started in their own small um, um, ways. But unfortunately, policy somersault has made them not to achieve. And that is, those of us that are already in it are frustrated. So those from outside that would like to invest in it are not encouraged. How does organizing them into cooperatives prevent the conflicts that they have with farmers? Yeah, what's happening is essentially the movement by the herdsmen in search of greener pasture mm. is what leads them into the territory that is the, the so-called farmer's enclave. And uh, if you're able to make them sedentary, not to move around, you've solved 90% of the problem. And this is, this is achievable only if you are guaranteed the market of the processed dairy product or the processed meat that you are able to collect from the Fulani cooperatives. And uh, it's, it's, it played out in some of the communities where our members are organizing these Fulanis and collecting their milk. Uh, we've had instances where the Fulanis in some of these places have become sedentary on their own because they have been able to establish a market for their products and they have value for their products and they're able to make some money. So they have no reason to move because they are not moving in search of conflicts. They are moving in search of pasture 
in the process conflict arises so if you're able to make them sedentary not to move around then the issue of conflict does not even arise. There seems to be some consensus, you know, even though there has been controversy as to whether what will work is ranches or grazing reserves. Now, it would seem that government is looking at both solutions. They, they want ranches for those who can afford it. They're also looking at grazing reserves for, you know, the many herdsmen who might not be able to afford it. How do you think the private sector can come in here and be of help? Yeah, I always, I always say this issue of uh, trial and error by government for the last 50 years mm -hmm. on the way forward with the pastoralist uh, has not worked. It's time that we look for other solutions. And I am telling you that let's try the private sector driven solution, which is purely business based. And at the end of the day, it's going to be we win-win situation for both the private for, for both the businessman and the dairy business or in the beef business and the full anise. Can, and, can you explain how the, that's what I'm asking how does the private sector come in yeah so what we all we need to do is enabling environments and there is fiscal and there is physical government has to provide some basic infrastructure and the organization has to be done by government uh, we have a lot of uh, reserves, if you like, be it grazing or forest reserves, this could be converted into ranches. So if it's converted into ranches, this pastoralist could be directed to these places. And when there is an organized off-taking system where their beef or their milk could be off-taken by private investor for processing and selling into the market, then the problem is half solved. Now you say the government must provide an enabling environment. The controversy over ranches and grazing reserves has been who will fund or who is going to give up their land, uh, you know, to ensure that you know the pastoralists are able to get uh, pasture for their cattle. It's not an issue of giving up land. Once it becomes a business, for God's sake, it's it's an agri business. Mm -hmm. Lots of people that are even cultivating lands are not cultivating on the land that belongs to them. They lease these lands. Once it becomes profitable, it's an agreement between you and the landowner. And the landowner will want you to even go into it because he knows he's going to make some money out of it. So it does not bring conflict anywhere. It has to be a symbiotic relationship. It was like this some years back when the landowners were benefiting from the manure of the Fulani herdsmen. But it changed because now instead of the cow dung, the 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 fertilizer the the the, the fertil the organic the inorganic fertilizer abounds and it's been encouraged so everybody abandoned the manure so the 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 the, the, the hearts men cattle do no longer add value to the land as much as it used to so the farmers started seeing them as as as, as a liability rather than asset they used to be so you can even you can reverse this in a modern way by making sure that okay the landowner you either lease or an or some kind of an agreement between you and the uh, and the owners of the cattle and then you now host them for a fee if you like and then you can even start producing fodder mm -hmm. that you will feed the cattle at the end of the day but at the end of the day mm -hmm. both you the pastoralist and the, the the that is you the farmer should be able to 